I'm Ken Rockwell here on KenRockwell.com, live here at KenRockwell.tv. I just got my Nikon Z6 II from my friends at B&H, whom I've been using to get my stuff since the 1970s. Let's take a look and see what I got. This is a kit with the 24-70 f4 lens, which I have covered in depth uh, two years ago when that first came out. Take a quick look at the back of the box. And this is all live. I have not opened this before. This is all live here. Here's where things are made, but we're going to look at that for real inside the box. And let's take a look. I'm not going to look at the lens so much because that's been covered in great detail two years ago. I just happened to get another one with this kit. In our box, this is a virginal opening. Okay, we have two printed manuals. One in Espanol and one on Inglés. This is nice. I don't know if anybody really uses printed manuals anymore, but it's nice of Nikon to include these. Warranty cards. This is important. This is a USA model. You'll notice it says USA here. Always buy from one of my authorized sources because if you don't, and the links to them are in my comments, if you buy at a local store or some unauthorized store that I haven't actually specifically listed as you having used myself, you never know if they're going to ship to USA or gray market products. And gray market products would have no warranty in the US, even though it's the same camera. Also make sure that the serial numbers on your actual lenses and cameras match what's on the card. The lens has an additional four year for a total of five years warranty if you keep your receipts <laughs> all properly. And again, if you silly enough to buy this camera from anybody else other than uh, one of the places I recommend, make sure you confirm all this when you first get the camera so you can still return. Another great thing and reason I've been using B&A since the 70s is if I get this camera and I don't love it to death, I've now got at least 30 days to just send it back for a full cash refund. No dirty looks, no restocking fees, no nonsense. I uh, just get my money back and go get something I really do want. Here's an ad for the Nikon School. I've taken the Nikon School. Nikon School is really good. It's not so much a school. It's a several hour long presentation in a hotel conference room or a very big conference room usually. And it's taught by guys that really enjoy what they do. And I last took it about 20 years ago. But it was good. Everybody should take it once. And funny, the guys were saying that sometimes people take it several times. They said, guys, it's the same thing every year. You're not going to learn more about coming multiple times. But some people just love it. So it's, it's, it's good to do. I don't know that I do it online. But, you know, everybody learns differently. Okay, let's see what's in our box. First virginal opening. Let's see what we've got here. How do we fold this out of the way? Unrehearsed. we got lots of stuff. Okay, this here's the camera. This is a cloth bag. This is our lens. I'm not going to even open the lens because I've covered that in depth before. Let's take a look here. Let's go from the wrong side. Accessories. This is a USB-A to USB-C cable. Always good to have. Here's one of these horrible little MH25H chargers that I just don't like. The problem is it has no folding plug. It has to use a cord or a nasty little stub. And it's only got one light that blinks slowly or stays unsteady when it's done. It doesn't really tell you things as well as the Canon chargers do. Canon chargers have two different colors of light, green and amber, telling you if it's charging and how charged it is. And here's you have to use this charger, which admittedly, although I'm complaining about it, this charger is an extra. Look, you got to plug that in there. You've got to be kidding me. And they've been doing this for about 10 years. That's one of the reasons I prefer Canon, much better chargers. But in any case, you don't need this charger because you can charge it by USB in the camera. The reason that it's nice to have this charger, and I have to take my hats off to Nikon for including this charger that usually runs for about $50 if you buy it separately, is you can charge two batteries at once. You get back at the end of the day, you plug in your camera, first battery charges in camera, and your spare can charge in this external charger. So hats off to Nikon for that. And this little envelope, these are called cable protectors, but they're not cable protectors. These screw into the side of your camera if you're shooting them with cables attached maybe for tethered video I don't agree with these what happens is these don't protect the cables these protect the connectors on the camera but they only protect it in the instances where somebody just tripped over that cable and pull your camera to the ground so you'll have a camera that's destroyed because you shot with the cable tethered but at least the connectors <laughs> won't be destroyed so I think these are a bit silly I, I don't shoot tethered and having shot in studios for a long time even shooting flash with a sync cord, you quickly learn if you've got anybody, even if it's just you, you're going to trip over the cord, you're going to pull the camera off onto the ground, destroy something, so cordless is the way to go. Here is a strap. I never use these. I use my own straps, and these are all wrapped up and ready to go when I sell my camera, and usually about two years now. Here's the battery. Here's the battery. 
comes with this little plastic cover. These are good. Always save these if you're carrying it pretty much anywhere. This prevents the keys if you're carrying in your pocket or whatever else it may be there from shorting out these contacts, which are fairly well protected. But if you do short them out, it could catch fire and set your pants on fire. You don't want that. What if we got an ENEL15C made in China? And here you go. You'll notice they try to hide that. They put Japan in big letters, cells made in Japan, which is actually pretty good. And the further process, I mean, they actually turned them into a battery system here with cells. As you all know, a battery is something that consists of two or more cells. A single cell, like an AA cell you might put in a flashlight, that's not a battery. Individual cells are cells, they're not batteries. Batteries are only when you combine them, but only electrical engineers would know that. Ah, this is the hood for the lens, which is kind of a secondary thing here. Again, you can see my review of the lens elsewhere, which is a great lens. Dinky plastic hood made in Thailand, which is standard today. Now, in the moment for which you've all been waiting, let's look at our camera. Which, to be honest, I don't expect to see anything significantly different from the Z6, which came out over two years ago and I think is already old news. So I'm not that excited about this camera. What have we got? We've got a sticker to protect the plastic LCD from dirt and crud and fingerprints. The screen goes up, goes down, but it does not go left or right. Where is it made here? Uh, offshore to Thailand. Thailand's a great place, but if I want to buy precision instruments, I want this thing made in Switzerland, Sweden, Germany, United States, France, England, not Thailand. <laughs> Please, make it in Japan if you care about the quality. I don't prefer these knobs. It takes at least two fingers to operate. Well, you could do it like this. The problem is you've actually got to stop and futz with a second hand. There's no mode dial here, as I prefer on the Z5. It's got your usual collection of knobs and buttons. Again, no news. It's essentially the same thing as the old Z6, so I'm not sure why I even care. What's nice is, is it does have an additional card slot. It's got one of these awful XQD slots. CF, Express, and XQD fit the same. Plus, it also has a slot for an SD card, so that's good. Although, I'd much rather just have two SD cards. But, you know, we all have our different preferences. Here's the battery door. Nothing unusual there. These are the usual crappy plastic rubbery things. The reason they're crappy is these will fall off in about 10 years. It's only held on by a tiny little thing. And then when you lose these, you lose all your ceiling. I don't know, my Z6 and Z7, there's a direct air connection between these holes and the lens. So when you're zooming your lens in and out, there's air blowing in and out of these. So if you keep this on, air blows in and out from other places on the camera. <laughs> the charge light's almost invisible right here when you're charging via USB. Mic, headphone, three and a half millimeters. We've got a remote control, which admittedly I probably would do on via the app, HDMI and USB-C. And that's it. That's a first unboxing of the new Nikon Z6 Mark II, which is really just the same old Z6 with a Mark II thrown in front of it because Nikon couldn't come up with anything really innovative like Canon has done. Again, thank you very much for watching KenRockwell.com here on KenRockwell.tv.